Okay, so thank you. Um, thanks for chatting to us for Lesbian Visibility Week. Um, first of all, how, how are you? How is it, how's an average day in lockdown at the moment? <laughs> well, this, the weird thing is, obviously, apart from being aware of a global pandemic, um, it's not that different for me in terms of a lot of my days because I'm at home writing a lot anyway. So uh, I get up and go to my home office most days. I've also got a home recording studio for doing audio books and stuff. So I spend a lot of time at home when I'm not uh, on set or going to the theater in the evening, but a lot of my days are sitting at my desk anyway. So Yeah. yeah. And who, who are you in lockdown with? Uh, with my wife, Renee Brannan, and with our younger son, who is 27, he's an adult, but um, he had taken a few months off, and so he found himself in lockdown with us. Every young man's dream, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what's, what's the view from your window at the moment? What can you see outside? Um, I can see, so we've got a shared garden. Um, it's divided in half. I'm very lucky that we have a garden. So I've got a little outdoor area. And then if I go down the back, I can actually do some gardening, which is uh, a luxury, obviously, right now. Um, and I can just see my neighbour going into her home office. Everybody's gardens are looking really nice this year. <laughs> so last year I was just doing plays all summer and I didn't get a chance to look after it. It's, it's, uh, it's really nice to be able to do the things I should usually do. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, in amongst, I mean, it's, it's a nice time to sort of reevaluate your life and, and your priorities and things like that, but it's also quite a testing time, um, obviously and particularly so for the LGBTQI community. Yeah. Um, how can you, how do you think we can stay connected and stay visible as well um, throughout the crisis? Mm. Well, I mean, f for those things, obviously the, the boom in social media is amazing because th that you, you can be so much more aware of who is out there, uh, you can reach out to people, you can be heard, you can have conversations in a way that, well, you'll remember just about Carrie maybe, but <laughs> I certainly remember, um, you know, 25 years ago, there was nothing like that. And so you totally felt alone um, if you didn't have friends in the community. And certainly at a time like this, where you can't even go out and, and meet people in a pub, then... Um, then you would have felt exceptionally isolated, I think. And obviously people are in different circumstances, but we, we both know um, from, from our, our friends and uh, you know how it can be for people whose families aren't accepting them anyway. So I'm very aware that there'll be young people maybe who are at home who don't have a happy family situation. Um, and I really hope, um, obviously Deep is doing amazing work and there are lots of good networks out there and I really hope that people are finding um you know kindred spirits and people to talk to online yes yeah um visibility is obviously incredibly important um what does it what does it mean for you personally to be to be able to be out in the public eye oh well I mean I couldn't imagine not not being out um I, I, you know, people, you think it's a choice, but I, I don't imagine it was a choice for me because otherwise you'd have had to have, I would have had to have led a complete double life because of already being in, in the public eye anyway. But I guess even if you weren't, you'd still, if you wanted to be private about it. I don't know. There were a lot of people when I came out who did say to me, oh, that's a really bad idea. Yeah. It's bad for your career. And also, you know, people won't like it and they won't like you. And, and sure, of course that did happen too. But, um, just being able to be yourself uh, well it, it's a huge obviously everybody comes to this point in their life some of them much younger than I did mm -hmm. um, but you can't how I don't understand how you could be able to do anything in your life really it must be very paralyzing I know there are lots of obviously communities in the world where it's not possible where you'd actually be in danger um, and I'm so grateful that I live now and in this time where it's more acceptable. But I'm also really interested in reading about how uh, women in particular in the past did that, you know, um, like Anne Lister. And uh, I'm just 
Diana Suami's new book's just come out. I don't know if yeah. you've seen it. Um, yeah, we've no. got an interview with her in the next issue. So oh, you do? Fantastic. Oh, I'm, have you read the book, Carrie? I haven't. No, I haven't no. had a chance yet, but it's I, I really want to, read, to, read, to read. Yeah, yeah, TBR pile. Yeah. Um, no, no modernism without lesbians. Brilliant. Um, and, you know, those were people who were in a quite a privileged situation, I know, because obviously they were often financially independent and that yeah. would make a big difference to their lives. Um, and uh, for other people not in that privileged situation, I guess they were more secretive, but still often living um, like open gay lives. Um, so I think visibility is, is really important now. I think it makes a huge difference to other people to know that you're not alone. I remember it was important to me to look at, at the role models when I came out, um, people yeah. who'd been brave and, uh, and, who, and who were living open lives and, and doing fine. Yes, yeah. Mm. So visibility looks different for different people depending on our, our circumstances. Mm. Um, for you, you sort of had the had the choice taken out of your hands as to how mm. visible you would be because of the press and how they sort of um, picked up your story. Um, mm. What was that sort of confusion like? How did you deal with it? Um, well, I knew that it was going to be like that. Um, and I was lucky because I had Renee to go through it with, with, but we didn't know each other even that well when it was all happening. We'd only been together for about six months. So it was, it was scary. Um, and obviously I felt very protective towards our children and the rest of our family and things. So there was that issue, but mostly it's a, it's a personal journey for everybody, isn't it? About yeah. how you get accepted, uh, the community that you find, the new family that you make as well. Um, and people who, aren't so supportive and you don't see them so often anymore um so the intrusion was one thing but really i think the most important thing is the personal journey for everybody the human journey that, that we make uh, doing that um and uh i just feel that i've seen in that 25 years since i came out such an incredible change in our society um and how now obviously with the law changing with marriage and and things like that being more supportive that makes a huge difference i think that does change hearts and minds as well as being able to live your life how you want to um but now you know there are so many different opportunities and now i, I don't feel like that's your box that you have to stay in anymore it's a much much wider we're seen in a much more wider context i think yes uh, and the, the, the way that we're perceived as lesbians um isn't so uh, stereotyped anymore either mm -hmm. what do you think have been some of those landmarks some of those um whether leg legislative or otherwise that sort of stood out for you um well i mean there, there were there was the sports women before uh, I came out there were those amazing um, sports people and obviously people in liter literature and I mean I always looked to people like the Bloomsbury set I remember when I was coming out I thought life was going to be like the Bloomsbury set <laughs> <laughs> and um, I was rather shocked because I was in uh, in Los Angeles and I went to do you remember you know dinosaur weekend and um, thinking wow it's going to be lots of people sitting around talking about books I and mean, it was just absolutely mad crazy party yes. <laughs> loads of women in thongs drinking giant drinks it wasn't what i expected um but it's still it's still great <laughs> nevertheless <laughs> <laughs> um so uh so i mean I, i've looked a lot at, uh, through books to, that has guided me along the way. So I think that some of those amazing um, sort of seminal works in literature made a big difference um, in terms of changing people and they've always been available to people. Yes. I remember when I was quite young, somebody saying to me, have you read Radcliffe's Hall? Radcliffe Hall's The Well of Loneliness and me thinking, oh no, I wonder what that is. But they obviously knew that that would be something I was interested <laughs> in uh, long before I did. Um, and uh, so, yes, I think, um, civil partnership changed a lot, changed things a lot. When Renee and I first got married, there was no law um, around it. So we considered it a marriage. It was 20 years ago this summer, but we'd never been to a, a, a same sex union or any of those ceremonies. So it was a bit of sort of making up as we went along. Um, Diva, when did Diva start? 94? 
94, yeah. Yeah. Um, so obviously that has been quite a huge thing, I think. Uh, it's been through the same sort of time that, that I've been out for and um, what an extraordinary time that's been able to represent and be available to people that you can go and buy it in Smiths and you know I think that's made a big makes makes a big difference um, and then just the you still see how, how what a big deal it is when someone comes out I mean everyone's always saying oh it's not who cares but obviously people do care because yes. it's yeah. still headline news um for men and women which is odd i think because i do think that most people kind of get on with it now in their day-to-day -day lives they understand and they know lots of people but still when somebody famous comes out everyone seems very surprised <laughs> <laughs> yes um you're perhaps best known as an actor but you recently um released your book uh, love and other thought experiments mm. um so congratulations on that thank you how has or how is writing sort of helping you through um, the current climate that, that we're in? How, how do you think that creativity can help us in times of crisis? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it's a huge thing, isn't it, for people to be able to express themselves. And so I think that's, that's the thing about any sort of creativity, if it's whatever it is that you do that feels creative to you, that's expressive. Um, I think that that's a, an amazing outlet for people. Um, and and I, I imagine that, and I hope that lots of people will be in touch with their creativity, especially now, although I don't think anyone should feel under pressure to yes. get on and write or paint or do or suddenly learn something um, only at their own pace and when they feel comfortable with it. I, do, I, 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 I can't bear the thought of anybody being under pressure to do something, especially mm -hmm. now, because it's so hard to tell how you're feeling from day to day or even minute to minute. You know, you wake up, some days you feel terrible, some days you feel all right, and then something suddenly tiny hits you and you're just in floods of tears. Um, because we're going through a grieving process. I think Suzanne Moore wrote a good article about the grief that we must all be feeling. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I, I totally recognize that. But you can feel so cut off from it because you're just literally in your little space. You see it on the news and obviously we're on social media, but um, you know, and some of us have lost um, friends or family, um, but you're not allowed to see them. So mm. it still feels quite distancing. I think creativity is, is amazing. It's made a huge difference to me to be able to sit down and write mm. because although my day job or night job is quite, is a creative job, obviously I can't do it unless somebody asks me to do it. Yeah. The thing about having something like, writing or, or painting or playing an instrument um or people are, people make things i mean i'm hopeless at making anything but you know if it's a patchwork quilt or whatever it is that somebody's doing they get to do that in their own time and however they want to do it and to say whatever they want to say with it which i, I you know is a huge outlet for all of us isn't it yes yeah absolutely i suppose one um silver lining about the the time that we're in is that it gives us a chance to sort of reimagine um our realities what um what do you hope personally and for the lgbtqi community more generally um what do you hope um a post uh, pandemic world might look like well i mean obviously i think we're all we're all considering what it is that we want how we want things to go back and, uh, and I see that there was a report today in the newspaper that something like only 9% of British people want things to return to exactly how they were before. Mm. I think definitely you can see how much more people can work from home, how, how many um, people would be liberated by being able to do that, which I think would make a big difference to people's lives. Um, in terms of the environment, I, I live in London, I can my air definitely feels better. I don't think that I'm just imagining that. Um, and uh, obviously we're also in an environmental crisis as a planet. So maybe that's put us more in touch with, you know, things that could make a difference. I like to think that we might consider how we could continue some of the um, benefits to, to the air quality, to, to plant and animal life and stuff like that. Um, the economics, I think that universal basic income um, is something that people are thinking about much more widely about how we can support people. We have 
a safety net in his country. I, in America, there's very little. Um, I know that the Scandinavian countries are more developed in terms of how to provide that. Because it's always seemed to me completely ridiculous that we expect um, you know, some sort of 100% employment and total growth rate, et cetera, et cetera, when actually none of that matters. Um, we, we can't all work. There isn't enough work anyway. And, and some people aren't suited for work in that, in that way. And everybody should be supported. And we have enough that we can support uh, our citizens, I think. Yeah, I absolutely, absolutely agree. Um, Sophie Ward, thank you so much um, for chatting to us. It's been really lovely. Um, and enjoy the rest of your Lesbian Visibility Week. Thank you so much, Carrie. Thank you. Take care.